Okay, I think we are at long last live again. Okay. Today is just a day of stuff not going to plan. And that seems to have followed me to my stream. So, hopefully we're sorted out. I think. So right now, let's take a quick close-up look at our figure. So here's where he's at so far. Got a lot of the metallic highlights on. Detailing. Got his uh, little brass buckles. Copper crossbow. Brass flamethrower. Gunmetal boots and... Uh, Shoulder pad. There's a little Iron Man arc reactor thing with the Factorio gear on it in there. <laughs> in there somewhere. Um, so what we'll want to do at this point is go over most of that with a quick wash. I'll use the sepia shade again, but this time we will not be mixing it with the uh, flesh wash because we don't want those to turn out too red. Just grab up a quick two drops of that. And we're just going to carefully put this along any of these, uh, these outstanding metal bits. Of which there are a fair few. And we're just going to use these to basically dull them down a little bit so that they're not quite so exaggerated. I want them to be a little bit closer together. In color and in shading. This is a good way to do that. Probably going to be the best way to get these uh, these boots wrangled as well. So I really like the color that they are, but they're still very bright. The only part that we want to keep as bright as it has started is uh, the Factorio gear chest piece, since that is meant to be very bright and even lit up. So we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to leave that how it is. But yeah, these boots need to be changed. They're close to how I want them, but they're just a bit too bright. And this is going to be how we tone that down a bit. We'll get the same thing going on the crossbow, his other pauldron. Uh, we got most of his chest piece, but we're just going to make sure that that's all done properly. Some of this excess, we're just going to drag that around to all the places it needs to go. So there's quite a lot of it sitting back there. Crap, just a little more. Oh crap, I'm sorry. Uh, I've forgotten the autofocus again. Why don't you watch what I'm doing as if it were underwater? How about that? That's definitely a great viewing experience. Very informative as well. Right? And you can't see anything. It's, it's super informative. Okay, I think that's everywhere that needed that.
Yeah, that's looking a lot better. It's still distinctive, but it's not exaggerated quite so much anymore. It's a little bit extra on left cauldron. It's kind of given it a little bit of a rusty spot, which isn't quite what I was going for. See what I can do about getting some of that off of there. Okay. His back, unfortunately, just doesn't have a lot of detail to it to begin with. He's just got that huge backpack. His front is where all the kind of where all the action is. Hmm. I can't really do much to that. Uh, because there's nothing to paint in. <laughs> and the stuff that the backpack is on top of seems to be the same material as the backpack itself, so there's not really anything that I can do to make it more uh, visually interesting while sticking to the original color scheme. Hmm. Let's see about adding some brass to that. This tubing brass, even though that's not reflected in the art, because I think that will be more visually interesting. The same thing with the strap on the quiver. Let's see if there's anything else we should be doing that to. Probably these little rings, there's some kind of valve. As usual, I have slightly overdone it. That's what I get for not planning this out better to begin with. Hmm. It's unfortunate that this is the point of this process where I've, my brain and body have just sort of decided to not do stuff right. This is where it gets really fiddly. This is also the fun part, because this is where all the cool colors get to go on. Make everything look all crazy. Get a little grappler up there. And then one valve on either side. Or what appears to be valves. It's hard to tell. But yeah, those are going to be brass. So it gives us that nice dramatic color. Then we will wash with the same sepia shade. And the reason that we're still doing this, even though we want these areas to be relatively bright, is that we're going to go back over them and dry brush with the same metallic tones. I did not wait long enough for that to dry. Whoops. <laughs> See how far I can get this without actually moving any of the paint, right? I live dangerously sometimes.
Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm just gonna do a very slight dry brush of the underlying colors for where there's like dings and scrapes that make those stand out a little bit more. I'm doing this absolutely wrong. <laughs> it's great! Okay, so we'll lit up a little bit of gunmetal on the brush, clear most of that back off, and then we'll just real quick clean this up a little. Oh, that's still too much. Enough to make it shine, though. And it is retaining most of those shadows that we painted on there, so that's good. Yeah, I think I loaded too much paint. That's okay, though. We'll do the same thing with the copper. Just quickly go over this crossbow just very lightly. We don't want too much of this on there. You know, like I did to everything else. <laughs> chest plate this dry brush style one more time that is looking a lot better actually not perfect by any means but better This dry brush is in very sad shape. <laughs> Ugh, I've been very hard on the poor thing. Quite a fact, most of my brushes are suffering a little. It's not too bad, but it's, uh, it's noticeable. Hmm. So we need to do the bits of rope, the arrows, some of his uh, leather strapping. I think I probably do with a second color. And then I also neglected the hilt of this dagger, which is a noticeably different color than everything else around there. Okay. 
And I've noticed that I can kind of correct for some of my mistakes with, uh, with the metallic paint by using this wash, because it sort of covers it up and doesn't makes it unshiny enough. But it's sort of tolerable. <laughs> Okay. So yeah, he's mostly together already, actually. Still a little left that we need to do. But he is... ...coming together reasonably well. Sort of like a desert raider look to him. It's a little bit more yellow than I intended, I think, but that's all right. Looks a little bit redder in real life, and I think that's okay. Part of that's the lighting setup, and part of that's the camera's white balance being funky. Um, but he is a little bit yellower than I, than I intended, so that's like some of it is real. <laughs> uh, all right, so. I think what we're going to want to do next is get the white coat on over top of the parts that are going to be blue. Well, no, you know what? First, we'll want to get some charred brown and put that onto his goggles. That's the only place that I can see that we need that color. But we do need it in order to proceed with the white because the goggles the lenses of the goggles that are going to be all crazy-like are over top of this. All right, so we'll get that all thinned out, and we'll switch over to a detail brush because I don't want to mess these up. This is small enough that uh, I'm not confident in my ability with the larger brush. Uh, so we'll go with a 10 0. Okay. Looks like this goes all the way up the side of his head. I think we'll probably want to color like the rope and the wood in the same color as well. It's going to be the easiest way to do that and have it still look good. Okay. It's the side of him just about done. Switch over to the other end.
now that I'm thinking about it, the uh, developers of this game, the artists, really like putting goggles on these guys. Like a lot. Or like weird eyewear, I guess. I'm grateful for it. It means that I don't have to paint pupils. It is a strange decision. So we're gonna use our three zero to clean up some of this paint that's gone a little bit stray. particularly between the two sides, or between the, uh, the two sets of lenses, rather, because that is where it's going to be hardest to correct for. Okay. Now, now that this black is on here, or not black, but this dark brown is uh, is on this particular area, he's reminding me a lot of the characters in the movie Nine. <laughs> it's like weird little puppet guys. I really like that movie, don't get me wrong, but the aesthetic was very weird. Okay. I genuinely can't tell if this is supposed to be an ear or a piece of his goggles, because he's only got it on one side. I'm going to go with goggles, because it's just sort of what that looks like to me. Okay, so we'll let that dry while we are mixing up our other colors for this. So we're going to get going with the white, the electric blue, and the purple. Oh, actually, you know what? No, let me, let me actually do all the wooden bits and the rope bits first. I neglected to do that. Ugh, okay. That's my bad. We're just going to overpaint the tips a little bit because we're going to go back over with the gunmetal in a minute. Okay, bolt tips. Those are also going to get dry brushed in the uh, purple, just very, very slightly. I'm going to lighten the purple and dry brush over this, because that's supposed to be like glowing or poisoned or something, I don't know. <laughs> it's not really clear what it's supposed to be. It looks cool. Okay, now we're going to mix the other colors. No, now we're not going to mix the other colors. Now we're going to remember that the rope is a thing. 
lots of little bits on this guy. This is precisely why I was discussing Greebling earlier. Because there is so much going on with this figure compared to the other ones we've done. Yeah, that looks a little bit better, I think. Hey, excuse me. Okay. Whew. My nose is making a day of it. All right, so let's bring him in for a close-up shot, but he's got his goggles on. You can see a little bit more of these details now. Not a ton just yet, but we're getting there. And he's got his rope on his right hip. Alrighty. Alrighty, alrighty. So let's get our white, our blue, and our purple mixed. So just as a quick reminder, we're using Dead White, Electric Blue, and Warlord Purple. I'm going to mix up two drops of each, not because I expect that I will need so much, but because that'll make it easier to mix our colors as we go. Thinner in there. Purple probably only needs the one drop since it's already pretty thin. The white needs a little bit extra because it's quite thick. Okay, and we'll use our old crappy brush to mix everything together in the portions that we need. That'll be great. So we'll need just regular white, we'll need regular blue, we'll need a light blue color. It's halfway between the two, and then sort of like half tones on the way there. We will need a blue and purple mixed together, as well as some white in that. And then we'll also need a light purple as well.
Okay. That's I'm pretty happy with that. That selection. So what we're going to do is everywhere that's going to be blue or purple, we're going to go over it with white because we want those spots to really stand out. Much as we did with the Spellweavers Fire and Ice. The exception to that is where we want the lighting portions to go. Um, so for example, um, we don't want to give uh, white to the arrowheads because that's just going to be lit with just like a vague little bit of purple. I've overloaded my brush, so I need to be very careful. So we're going to color up this potion that he's holding in his hand. Which I'm assuming is supposed to be his like signature healing move, the heal potion. Which is like a group heal kind of thing, I think. I haven't actually played the Tinkerer, so I'm not sure. <laughs> Don't know his moves very well. Getting there on this side. Okay. There's his funky looking potion. Scribe up some more and go for his eyes. Got these big honking lenses on here. Though probably not quite as big as I've just painted them. Yeah, that's too much. <laughs> Now that it's roughly the color of milk spilled all over his face, I'm just gonna sop up some of that that got in the wrong places. And clean up my mistakes. Okay, we'll go back over that and the correct positions once the water has had a chance to dry. Should only take a little bit. Okay, just like a little dab right on the middle of his chest piece. And then we're going to do these three lines. on his uh, 
I don't know, groin guard, I guess. For some reason, the actual term codpiece. Not really a codpiece, though, is it? Uh, and then we're also going to give him just a tiny little dot of white right on the tip of his flamethrower because we're going to paint on some purple fire there. Make it all fancy like. Hmm. Unfortunately, despite thinning, this white is still really chalky and sort of hard to manage. In spite of my best efforts. <laughs> yeah, okay, I don't think there's anywhere else that needs it, although we do probably want to go over that, uh, the white on his goggles, uh, just to clean up the edge of that a little bit. Just gonna use our same uh, dark brown color here. Just uh, clean up those edges so that they don't look quite so out of place. It's probably going to take a couple coats because this paint is fairly thin. Okay. Might actually be okay. Well, not quite. <laughs> Definitely needs to, uh, to go back and forth with the white a little bit, make sure that the edges are just right. Because it is a touch jank right now. Okay, so I'm happy with his left eye. Just need to get his right eye lens to look round. And then I will be happy with that. We can go on with the actual coloring part of this. Cool stuff. There we go. That's that's good. I'm happy with that. All right, so we've repointed our brush, and now we can take on some of these bright colors. We're going to start with a coat of blue on most of each of these. Not quite all. Then we're going to sort of mottle on the purple and the light blue and the light purple everywhere that it's warranted, everywhere it's needed. This, uh, this potion especially is meant to be like a sort of a pearlescent, mingled, commingled color. 
In fact, I might want to do that while it's still wet. Well, that that's probably okay. I can do it in thinner coats of the other stuff. That'll be all right. Okay, there's our blue base coat for that, and we'll do the same thing to the eyes now that they've had a second to dry. And we haven't quite completely covered up the uh, the bits on his pants or loincloth or whatever we're going to call that. Uh, let me bring the focus in so I can show you guys what I've done here. So he's got loads of blue now. Um, and you can see that some parts of that bit on his pants is, are still white. And we also haven't touched uh, the tip of his flamethrower. That's still also completely white. We're going to hit that with the dark through light purple colors. Except that at least some of that is already dry. Crap. Um, let's see if I can find some that's still wet down there. All right, that'll work. We're going to paint on some random little bits of our middle color between blue and the purple to the potion bottle. Not all of the potion bottle, just some. We do want this to be sort of erratically colored. And then we will take the actual purple, paint that in there as well. And then we'll go over it again with lighter colors. So we're going to add some white into that. And sort of kick it into a lighter spectrum. do this fairly arbitrarily, it's just going to kind of be a mix of each thing. Kind of feeling like a commercial for crunch berries right now. Colors that I'm using. Not a sponsor, obviously.
It does have the look of a breakfast cereal about it, though. Reasons I'm not entirely able to articulate. Some uh, much lighter color in there in the flamethrower tip. Yeah, that looks good. Now we'll finish out shading in these light parts, whatever you would even call them. don't really know how to do the blending style that I want on these. I'm just going to have to kind of experiment with it a little bit. And by experiment, I mean get blue paint places it's not supposed to go. Ugh. Let's fix that before it dries up completely. I was kind of worried about this. Just not able to uh, to keep control of these details very well. Which is kind of an issue when they're so important to the overall look. I think that will be all right. Yeah, that's that's acceptable for tabletop quality. I don't love it up close and personal, but it's all right. It'll be okay. Get the uh, lightened portions painted onto these. And now we can dry brush the lighting onto the areas around this stuff. Gonna need to be very, very, very dry. And will hopefully not cause a massive disaster to the rest of the coloring. Oh boy, wish me luck. <laughs> Okay. So I think that's the color I want to use for the actual light portions.
And then the last thing that we're going to do, I think, is lighten the color present on this potion up a little bit because it's pretty saturated right now. And then after that, I think I'm happy with it. Okay. Just get a little bit of minimal dry brushing on that to uh, desaturate it. It's going to be pretty aggressive just because I'm dry brushing with a very light color compared to what's already on there. Hopefully, that should give it the effect that I'm looking for. I'm not sure if it will. Yeah, that's decent. That's decent. I'll take it. <laughs> Let's clear up the brush. Hmm. I need to do some extra cleaning on these tonight. They're a little bit gross. <laughs> and I have, of course, forgotten the autofocus again. But at least now you can see it. His finished state. His little glowy potion. Got this weird little backpack with nozzles on it. Got a quiver full of bolts. And I decided against dry brushing the bolts because I think they actually look okay how they are. But yeah, that's our tinkerer. Mr. Sunshine Dope Chillin' Drag Strip Twirl Shy. And uh, let's see, the last thing to do, since I almost forgot to do it yet again, is to paint up that base that all covered up. small drops of black should be quite plenty. Okay. And since these bases are at least nominally temporary, as before, it doesn't necessarily have to be the best job ever, it just has to be consistently black. As long as I can manage that, I think we'll be fine. I think I am going to actually have to use a smaller brush to get in there all the way. Well, maybe not. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see if I can manage. I have slightly messed up his feet. But I think I can fix that without too much trouble. Just uh, wrap up our three zero. Some clean water this time, eh? Get 
that black off of the beat. Should be all right. It's not perfect, but it'll be good enough. And then we will just add on the last little bit of black again using a brush that is small enough for the job. Is being me and sometimes being a little bit stupid and or lazy about this sort of thing. That is wrong. Some of this got diluted as well. Hmm. Weird. Because as far as I could tell, I didn't do that. Don't know what the heck I did there, but that's all right. Didn't really have any effect on anything. It just needs to be redone. Our crappy base painting brush. This is by no means real miniature basing, if anybody was wondering. I would think it would be obvious, but <laughs> just in case anybody is not familiar with the practice, this is not how you make your mini bases look fancy. <laughs> That's also not how you keep um, a brush on your work surface. That, that thing that I just did there, throwing it on the floor for absolutely no reason. Uh, okay. Okay, well, that is good buddy drag strip all done. And that's him next to his art. And with that, I think we will be done for the night. Thanks for coming, everybody, and come back tomorrow when we will finish up the last mini. The brute named Gordeaux. Good night, everyone.